Hey guys, today I'm gonna to share with you some makeup hacks that I do that I think really improve not only the way that my makeup looks, but the longevity of it and all of that good stuff. Now, I am 48 years old, I have hyperpigmentation, I have erythema, so I have redness on my face, I have dehydrated skin, and it can sometimes look dull. So I have all kinds of things that I'm kind of trying to improve with makeup. And um, so I'm barefaced right now. All I've done this morning was I washed my face, I liked, I liked to wash my face in the morning. I know a lot of people don't, but I do a lot of lymphatic drainage in the morning. So I get my face wet anyway and use gua sha, etc. But I used some uh, cleanser from Fervor. You guys should have already heard about this from me multiple times because I am digging this uh, fermented black tea cleansing milk. It's just beautiful. I used that. I used the lightning swipe from Hero. These are little lightning pads that um, I usually take one and cut it in half and they're really, really soaked with niacinamide and kochic acid and a bunch of other things that help with pigment. I find that this is really just lightweight. It just disappears. It's like a toner almost. So it's really, really easy for me to um, kind of put into my day and night routine without noticing like an extra layer or anything. And then I did my timeless 20% vitamin C which I've been digging so much because it's the first time I've ever used L ascorbic acid in a 20% in all of the right, you know, all of the right stuff, you know, the right boxes checked that it actually um, isn't irritating my skin. So I've got those three things on my skin now. So from here, what I do with my kind of makeup slash end of skincare routine is of course, I like to use um, sunscreen, of course, and I tend to need a moisturizer. What I've been doing lately is I have been using, and this is a favorite I've had forever and ever and ever, you guys probably heard about this before, but it is the Sun Project Shimmer Sun Essence. It's an SPF of 30, but it's also a moisturizer and it's also an illuminator. This is one of my all time favorite things in the world. It's just beautiful. I find that I pull this out usually about this time of year, every year. And I love it because it fakes out hydrated skin, it fakes out luminosity, and it also provides a little bit of sun protection. And today we have a cloudy day and I'm not going anywhere. I'm just staying inside. So for me today, this is the perfect hybrid of moisturizer and sunscreen. So this is what I use. And I would say that this is my first hack is to, if you are somebody who has dull skin, if you feel like you just lack luster, lack luminosity, try using an illuminating SPF or an illuminating moisturizer. So it's different than a primer and it's different than, you know, an actual highlighter. It is, it is kind of, um, this one has a little bit of a hint of a cool pink tone under it but in a really, really subtle way that gives you a luminosity. So I'm generous with it because I am using it as my SPF. And um, so, you know, I wanna get enough coverage, but I'm also using it as my moisturizer. So I am pretty generous with it. I'm gonna show you on the back of my hand what I'm talking about when I say it's luminous. So maybe you can see, do you see this is the hand with the Sun Project and this is the hand without. It just gives, it catches light and it really just can um, help to make the skin kind of glow. But once you put on makeup, it, um, it doesn't look like a disco ball. You can't see the glow under the makeup except for that it looks like healthy skin. I really, really enjoy it. Pulled my hair back for those of you who that drives crazy. Okay, so once I have the sunscreen on, I can already tell, I, I hope you can tell on camera, but it, it gives a luminosity already. I love it so much. The next thing that I do is I apply my contour first, and I used to not use contour at all, but I really enjoy using a contour. The contour that I'm using today is by Anastasia. You can get any contour that you want. It can be a cream, it can be, um, you know, a liquid form, but if you're gonna do it in this step, it needs to be a cream or a liquid. So the Anastasia, this is in the shade, this is in the shade Mink. So I would say it's kind of a mid-tone, and you can see that it's super cool toned, which is very important. 
Okay, now the way that I do this, I'm gonna move my mirror over here, is you gotta just contour where you think that you want you know, the areas on your face to recede. And for me, I really like for my forehead to kind of be smaller in this way. I just like that. And sometimes I feel like my cheeks are um, a little bit too much, personally. And then I will go right here, and that's about it. Sometimes I would do my jawline, but um, not always. So that's where I put my contour. The next thing that I do is I'm gonna dot on a foundation. And the one that I'm gonna use today is actually one of my all-time favorite CC creams, and it is by Dermablend. You guys, this is so good. It does do some color correcting, and it does have that SPF of 50, so it has multiple kind of um, benefits, more than maybe a foundation might, but it definitely has plenty of coverage. I am using the color 37N. It's definitely more tan than I am, but right now I feel like um, being a little bit more tan. I can use the 30, but what I really wanna show you with this one, you guys, is that you don't need a lot. So if you can see, that's how much I'm gonna use for my entire face. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dot this all around my face where I don't have contour and where I'm not gonna put blush. So I'm just going to do this. And like I said, I'm not using a lot. Really, really important. And if you can see that one little amount dotted all over my face. Next thing I'm gonna do is apply a liquid cream, any kind of blush that you can blend in. This one is the Rare Beauty. Uh, this is Happy. Man, I love this. The key to this one is not to use too much. It's so pigmented that if you use too much, you will look like a clown, but if you use just the right amount, it's absolutely gorgeous. So I put it just two dots right there, two dots on each side, right? Now what I'm gonna do is, this is the hack. I'm gonna put a setting spray over all of this. Now I got this from Chloe Morello on Instagram. She did this. I've been doing it ever since I saw that and it has been a game changer for me. I'm gonna use the e.l.f. Stay All Night Micro Fine Setting Mist. I also sometimes use the All Nighter from Urban Decay, but what I'm gonna do before I do any blending, and it is a super fine mist, you guys. Okay, now I'm gonna take a BK. This is BK Beauty 101. This brush, you guys, if you guys haven't tried these brushes, they sent me these brushes and I am a complete novice. This brush is incredible. It's perfect for blending this kind of thing in. Now I just go in and I blend everywhere that I have foundation first. So I'm skipping over where I have the contour and I'm skipping over where I have the blush. Okay? But that setting spray helps everything move around so you can get away with that tiny, tiny amount of foundation. It's really super cool, you guys. And I am finding it is causing my makeup to last all day long, which means this CC cream, you can already get it to last all day. It's really pretty incredible. Okay, once I have the CC cream blended in, now I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna blend in the contour and the blush is gonna be last. So for the contour, I kinda use a light hand, same brush, and you'll see I didn't put any makeup where the um, contour was. So the contour is the makeup right there. This leads to kind of a more natural look and less of a, you know, one makeup on top of another makeup. And that, that kind of just gives more of a believable skin-like finish. And because I take pretty good care of my skin, I feel like um, I, wanna, I want it to show through. Now the last thing that I have is my blush. So the way that I do my blush so that it doesn't just disappear into my skin is I stipple. So I just bounce. If you swipe or you swirl or you buff or whatever, you will lose coverage. Um, if you kind of stipple, you will keep coverage.
Okay, so all of that is gonna dry down here in the next five minutes or so and uh, set, essentially. What I do for my eyes, you guys, is almost every single day, I start out with a wash of just a really neutral, lightish color. Um, I'll list what I'm using in the description box, but you know, you can grab anything that is kind of just a light neutral color. And I do a wash of that over my entire lid. And because I use that setting spray, it's like I used an eyeshadow primer. I noticed that my eyeshadow stays so much longer than it did before, before I was doing this little hack that I learned from Chloe Morello. I also just put that underneath and I just use a regular, this is a BK203. Swear these are the softest, nicest brushes. This one's really great because it's almost like one of those that you would use just in your crease, but it's got a little bit more um, firmness. So I find that I don't flick eyeshadow all over the place because like I said, I am not a makeup artist. So it's kind of nice to have brushes that are really um, kind of foolproof, seriously. Okay, so that's just a neutral and it's kind of like a base, right? What I go back and do now is I'm gonna take another BK brush. This is like a pencil brush. This one is 207. This is one of the best brushes ever if you have mature eyes, eyelids, etc. because it's kind of small but it's got enough there that you can actually pack a punch with it, but it's not so big that you can't get into kind of the smaller crevices and creases, etc. Now I take a dark, dark color, a dark, dark brown, and I go straight up from just at the outer corner of my eye, straight up, and I will show you this. And it almost seems like you're too far in, but you're not. I'm literally making a stripe, if you can see that. This is how I do my makeup, like, I don't know, 75% of the time. And it looks really crazy at first. So this is just a matte, dark cocoa color. So do you see just this, right? Okay, I take that same color. Now this is just dependent on you know your preference. I take that same color on a you know fluffy pencil brush and I run it underneath. For me and my eye color, I actually like to have a little definition underneath because uh, otherwise, I don't know, it, it just doesn't, my face isn't defined enough if I don't. So I do that. That can sometimes look a little bit harsh so what I will do is I go back to that original color that I washed all over my eyes and I put it over the darker and it kind of blows out that eyeshadow. You guys, I'm not even looking in a mirror. That's how much I just prefer that sort of smoked out look. It doesn't have to be precise, no eyeliner, etc. Okay, so now that that part's done, I take a fluffier brush. I'm gonna use another BK brush because they were so kind to send these to me and they're so freaking good. This is the 203, so it's a little bit fluffier. And all I'm gonna do is flick that line towards the middle. So I'm blending it in. And for me, this kind of, uh, This kind of creates that, you know, outer, I don't know, I don't know what makeup artists call it, but that outer crease without a lot of skill. That's really the bottom line here. I'm doing something that doesn't require a ton of skill because <laughs> I don't have a ton of skill. So what I have now is kind of a gradient. So I have that darker on the outer edge and it kind of fades into the inside without having to do a lot of skilled tricks. Now something that I do do often is then I will take some kind of a foiled color and I'll just put it on my finger, I'll show you, on top of this makeup look that this is often it for me. I'll put on some mascara and this is it. But if I wanna do something a little bit that looks like I put a little bit more work into my eye look, I literally will take that and go to the inner corner into the inner corner and I just pat it in with a finger 
and that's it. That is my entire eyeshadow look, okay? And honestly, in real life, it just looks like I put a lot more work or I had a lot more skill, and I don't. Okay, now the next hack that I wanna tell you is to use an eyebrow pin. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but you can now get them. It used to be Anastasia was like it, but now you can get them. I just started using this one from Arches, Arches and Brows, Arches and Halos, Arches and Halos from Target. You guys, I did an Instagram little story or reel about it because I picked them up. I'm in the color Mocha Blonde because I like to add a little bit of definition to my eyebrows. I already have the micro bladed and micro shaded, but I still like to add more like hair strokes to them. So one of these pens is really great because you can literally add what looks like more hair strokes and definition. These are incredible. I've been using a pen for years and years and years, and it's really a great way to kind of fake out very natural looking, but um, in more voluminous, more full looking eyebrows. The one that I like probably the most is the one that has an angled tip. Normally, I really like just the plain felt tip, and I do like that very much from this brand also. Um, NYX also has one out now that's excellent. I like that one a lot. I do like this one better. This one is definitely, there's more of the actual pigment in the pen. I keep it stored with the cap side down, and I just find that um, it, it just works better. It works a little bit better than the NYX, but it works as well, if not better, than the Anastasia. And it is about $13. Anastasia is in the 20s, somewhere in the $20 range, so that's pretty cool. So I just take this little, um, angled brush and all I do is draw some hair strokes you guys at the beginning a little bit through and then I kind of add to the tail that's the extent of my eyebrows so I'm going to do that really quickly and I do find you guys that this makes a big difference to me because it's it's the whole framing your face right so that's definitely a big big tip is to use something on your eyebrows do your eyebrows even if you don't do a bunch of other makeup, if you do your eyebrows, especially when you're after 40 years old and a lot of us who are in our mid 40s, late 40s or older, we overplucked uh, a long time ago. And so we just happen to have not, you know, and we overpluck to the point where it's never coming back. So do yourself a favor and give yourself some eyebrows. However you manage to do that, it really does give a more youthful look to the face without even understanding why it, it's just an amazing um thing to do for your face so i don't take a ton of time i just draw some more hairs and like i said i elongate the tail because the other thing that i personally find that's relatively youthful is eyebrows that are longer I think that as we get older too, we lose the tail of our eyebrows, like they just disappear. There's no hair there, <laughs> there's nothing. And so I like to elongate it a little bit because when I was younger, I definitely had more brow. It was longer, it was fuller, yada, 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 till I started over plucking in the 90s. My last hack is if you are a blonde and you have blue eyes or if you have lighter, try using brown mascara. I really think that it can be very, very soft and it can look really, really pretty. The one that I really love, and I've loved this for years, is by Thrive. This is in the color Crystal. It is a tubing mascara. So when you go to remove it, you have to splash, 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 splash with water and using like eye makeup remover, etc., doesn't do the trick. You need to splash with water. Now, if you don't want to use a tubing mascara, my other favorite mascara that I've only discovered in like the last two months, but man, these are my two favorite. It is black, but it's by Rare Beauty. This Rare Beauty mascara is incredible. It does not flake, it doesn't smudge, it doesn't budge. That's the other tip with mascara. Use one that doesn't flake, budge, fall onto your face because over the course of the day, having that under here can really just ruin everything about our face. It really can take you down, make you look tired. Just, it really, it can make you look like you're not put together even if the rest of your makeup looks great. So choose a mascara that it will stick around all day long. Tubing is excellent and if you can get brown, even better. And then on the alternate, this is not waterproof, but it is. it doesn't go anywhere on your face. So today I think I will use the Rare Beauty, actually, and I'll fast forward you guys so you don't have to watch me put on mascara. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of lipstick on. Obviously, you can just do whatever you want. This is a just a clay de po lavender. Just pick whatever you like. The very last thing that I like to do, especially with the hack of using the um, setting spray, etc. Now that it's really set, this is when I put a little bit of bronzer on. For me, and I'm using a powder, for me what this does is it kind of sets around the perimeter of my face, gives a little bit of color, and I find that it helps everything last a lot longer. This is a Shantikai uh, bronzer in Serena. Serena, and I'm using a BK Beauty 106. Um, I just like this, it's little, it may not even be the bronzer brush, you guys, but it's the one I'm gonna use. And I just go kind of in a little bit of a C, kind of almost where I put my contour, just to add a little extra kind of sunniness, especially in February. And then I might go just here, like the sun hit me across the bridge of my nose. And that's that. So that's literally my everyday makeup look. And if I did this uh, without filming, I could get this entire thing done in easily under 10 minutes because by putting all of that makeup on at once and buffing it all in, you're like three quarters of the way done with your makeup. Then you just slap on some eyes and lips and uh, eyebrows and you're done. And it's just, it's a really, really fast way to do it. But more importantly than any of that, I think that it is really pretty to the skin and it lasts all day long. And it's kind of hard to get makeup that is glowy that also lasts all day long. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little uh, look into the way that I do my makeup. Again, I'm not a makeup artist, so go easy on me in the comments. I'd love to know your favorite setting spray if you use one. I'd also love to know if you're gonna try any of these tricks or if you already do. And give me, if you can, any of these, give me your number one favorite makeup trick that you've done or that you do that really is kind of like a game changer for you and uh, for your skin. I find that I get a lot of excellent tips from Risa. Um, Risa does makeup. She is absolutely amazing. I've gotten some really good makeup tips from my friend Anne from Anne P Makeup and More. Um, I've gotten some great tips from Lisa, from Lisa Lisa D1. I mean, there's so many fabulous women. Oh my gosh, and Lisa J, of course, of BK Beauty. I mean, if you are looking for makeup hacks, makeup tricks, geez, those ladies are absolutely incredible, wonderful to follow. Stephanie Marie, I can think of so many ladies who are 35 to, you know, plus that have some amazing, amazing tips and tricks for makeup that um, I'll link some of their channels down below because I think they're wonderful to follow for makeup. I just wanted to share my kind of novice makeup routine with you today. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will talk to you in my next skincare video. Take care.